Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about when buying sealed product absolutely fails. Now, a lot of you have been encouraged to go out and buy a case of Magic Origins, Eldritch Moon, all of these new sets. And as kind of an investment vehicle of some type, but before all of that, there was a set that was very expensive, so expensive that I could not even get my hands on it at one time. And it was the Commander's Arsenal. This set literally went from the store to eBay. Every store in Houston did exactly the same thing. And they don't have any of this. There was The supply was exceedingly low. This was before the time of massive reprints. So no one could have expected what happened next. Now my personal preference on... Should you buy a case of Magic Origins and hold it for 10 years and hope it goes up in price? Blank no. Blank no. Like, blank no. So let's take a look at what was considered a great investment for some people at the time was to buy these on eBay or buy them out and hold on to them and hope something good happens. The game has changed. Why has, why has the game changed or what has changed the game? new CEO, and everything's getting reprinted. So this is a set that, that was touted as the premier product. Let's take a look at the cards, and let's take a look at every single card that has pretty much been reprinted. It's like every new set, they, re, they pick a card from Commander's Arsenal and they reprint it. Pretty much, right? And the value of the set still good, but not nearly as high as it used to be. The only way I could see this set ever gaining the value back that a lot of people invested, quote unquote invested, is if this is seen as a collector's item. But why would this be seen as a collector's item? No one's even seen it. So when you talk about the cards, a lot of these have been reprinted. And even though they are not, even the ones that are not reprinted, I guarantee you they will be very soon. This was one of the most horrifying, you, you ask why, I used to buy lots of boxes, and I used to, I love fat packs because previous videos I said I have a lot of friends come over on a Friday night, we'll open fat pack, and then because they're taking the Uber home, they can put all this stuff in a little box and then go home, right? It, it makes sense logically speaking to have a box for them to go home and that is a fat pack. I don't invest in boxes anymore. I don't invest in fat packs anymore. I have such a aversion to it and Isabel actually works in a room and in that room there's lots of sealed product that I am very ashamed of almost. And <laughs> this one though absolutely got butchered. You know, Sh Sylvan Library, you got scroll rack. I'm positive Ristic Study will be reprinted. A lot of these premium cards were no longer premium because they just kept getting reprinted into oblivion, right? Like Silver and Library used to be a hundred dollar card in this set. If you can believe it, it was a hundred dollar card. Now it's like forty dollars. And even then, you probably don't want this foil because the foiling is not as bad as from the vault, but it's pretty bad. When the time to invest in boxes was Innistrad or later. New Phyrexia was great. Innistrad itself was great. Avacyn Restored was great. But then once you got to RTR, RTR boxes you can still get readily available at $80 cash in Houston. No problem. Gatecrash is under 80 on Dave and Adams. I think it was like 67 at one time. And what's that? Dragon Maze? <laughs> it's like 60, 65. I think on a good day on Dave and Adam's website, it's probably like $60 for a box if you buy enough of them. But regardless, Kalia of the Vast was one of the big selling points. A foil Kalia, reprinted and foil. Loyal Retainers, reprinted. Mind's Eye, reprinted again. And this particular copy is very cheap. So when you look at something like this and you say, huh, okay, I'm going to invest in a box what are you investing in? Because they're just going to reprint everything in the box. 
I originally believed they would reprint entire sets, kind of like how they do in Magic Online. Temp uh, Tempest Remastered is just really just Tempest. And they would just have boxes, and you could buy the boxes, and there you go. But why do that? Why not just reprint Wasteland? Right? That's the one card on Tempest Remastered, or Tempest that you everyone really wants. Right? The same with Alliance. Why print an Alliance box when people just want Force of Will? And the question I have, and I haven't really received a good answer to it, except it's fun to open these old packs. If you had the choice between a Alliance box and a Modern Masters box, which Modern Masters is actually cheaper, or no, Eternal Masters, why would you open the Alliance box, right? Like, outside the Force of Will, what are you hoping to get? But Internal Masters, which you can probably buy two Eternal Master boxes, probably pull some Force of Wills, some other good cards. And that is the secret to... The Zersin, I think, is like a penny stock now from <laughs> Conspiracy. Anything printed in Conspiracy or Conspiracy 2 is... As taking a nosedive if it is a reprint. Because those sets were loaded with really good reprints. So my conclusion is. My gosh. Why would you ever buy Case of Magic Origins. And hope that it goes up in price. That sounds so illogical. Because even let's say. Jace Vince Prodigy becomes a $100 card again. What they're going to do is. Just, just going to reprint it. This is a set. Of reprints. That they reprint it again. Slowly and steadily. They pretty much hit. I don't. Somebody do the math. They pretty much hit every single card in this set. Like I'm looking. Obviously some of them on their reserve list. Khan and as well as Liver Queen. Which cannot be quote unquote reprinted. But Loyal Retainers. Like Sylvan Library. Kalia, Foil Kalia of the Vast is a very pretty card. Uh, and it's just been so funny because this, you, you, if you played Magic when this came out, you know what the big controversy was. And it was that your local game store is never going to sell this to you at MSRP. They got greedy and they put it on eBay and they sold it for 1.5 times the value. And it got hoarded like crazy. This was a product because it was such a limited supply. And I think the dice, people really like the dice. Like the sleeves were like subpar in my opinion, but the giant dice, that got a reprint too. Like, come on, that even the dice got reprinted. Like, what the bike is going on? And people are telling you to invest in these things, right? They're going to reprint everything. Okay. If you want to play MTG Finance, do it for fun. Do not go into MTG Finance and be like, oh, I'm going to buy 10 cases of, I'm going to buy a case of every new set that comes out. I'm going to buy a case of Caldas, I'm going to buy a case of A for Revolve, and I'm going to be rolling in the money. Why would that make sense to anyone? Like, it does not make any sense. Even if, let's say A for Revolve, because it has Fatal Puss, and Fatal Puss, again, a very unlikely scenario, Fatal Puss becomes a $20 uncommon, and people are looking for that and force a will. What they're going to do is they're going to be like, oh, wow, Fatal Puss is 20 bucks. Let's reprint it in a supplemental product. How do I know this is going to happen? Iconic Masters, 25th Anniversary Masters, 2017 Masters, Eternal Masters, Eternal Masters again. And this has been the last few months that we know of, right? And we and conspiracy, conspiracy two, commander. All right, let's get to the brass tax and look at the prices of the cards of the set. Remember, all of these are foil. Duplicant is eight bucks. Eldrick is five. Kalea is fifty free and falling. So pretty much in, I think it's going to hit forty. I, I know it's going to hit 40 because I'm keeping a close tab on that one because I do want to collect her in vast quantities. Loyal Retainer, meh. Maelstrom, it's kind of good. Mind's Eye is really not worth 15. Uh, Mary's Wake, Ristic Study is always a good one, but it's going to be reprinted. I cannot imagine Ristic Study not being reprinted sometime soon. It just doesn't make sense. Rack Library has taken a hit. Um... And Vail actually, didn't Valor the Nightclad? Yeah, what's the Plane Chase Anthologies that was reprinted in? 
man, clear the vast is the big one, no, because that used to be one of the main selling points of this product. Command Tower is always very good. Degree of Pain, I believe, was recently reprinted. Desertion is in Conspiracy. Dino Chan, mm, Dragon Lair Spider, why is it even in the set? Chaos Warp. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that got reprinted too, did it? Anyway, a lot of these cards, these premium, high quality, amazing cards, were not in the good old days where you can just hold on to cards and they will go up to price no matter what you do, right? No matter what you do, you can speculate on any card. As long as he sees some play, it will go up in price. For mo the majority of people, to buy a box at, let's say you buy a box at 90 or shipping, maybe you can buy it at 80, for, that, for you to get any profit, assuming you pay yourself minimal wage for the time it takes to sell it, the time it takes to list it, the time it takes to package it and send it to the mail people, and the shipping cost, which is $6, that is a cost. The fees, TCG player fees are getting higher and higher, and even the PayPal fees. Assuming all these things, you would need that box that you purchased at 90 to be 150 before you can make a suitable profit, right? Otherwise, you would be just be better working at McDonald's. Now, here's the problem. McDonald's is a steady pay paycheck with no volatility and it's guaranteed, right? Holding on to lots of boxes which you need space. What the blank are you doing? Like, come on, dude. Do you really think any of these modern boxes, like the Magic Origins, let's take Magic Origins. Is that box ever going to get to 150? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And you, how long do you have to hold it for to get to 150? Very difficult to make money on sealed products. Um, now, it is difficult today because of reprints. It used to be super easy, right? You just buy into whatever and it goes up and it's like, great, awesome. But nowadays, things have changed. Um, I've been burnt a little bit from RTR. But I learned from RTR not to buy Battle from Zendikar. I did not really go in on Battle for Zendikar, although all my friends did. The large majority of my friends were super excited for that set. And now they're no longer playing Magic because they got burned to a crisp. And now I have tons of Zendikar product for like pennies on a dollar. And I'm like, oh. So it's one thing if you're buying at retail like they are or at close to retail it's another thing when you just buy the collection for like let's say what they paid 10 percent what they paid for right yeah i'm not gonna lose money because i paid bulk for it anyway that is it bye guys